Hello and Happy New Year. I'm Chris Hernandez. This is the Weekly Report, a look at news about programs and services provided by departments of the City of Kansas City, Missouri. The City's Municipal Art Commission is accepting proposals from artists for two very high-profile projects. The first is the 2014 Avenue of the Arts. That's a temporary public art installation. This project is open to Missouri and Kansas artists who live within 125 miles of Kansas City. The Avenue of the Arts Foundation will commission up to eight artists to create site-specific artworks. The art will be placed on Central Avenue in downtown Kansas City from June through October of next year. Proposals are due January 10th. For more information, including the Request for Qualification forms, visit kcmo.org art and click on Avenue of the Arts. For the second project, your art would be a permanent part of Kansas City's downtown streetcar project. Artists are asked to develop aesthetic elements to enhance stops along the streetcar line. Proposals for this project are due January 27th. For more information, go to kcmo.org art and click on KC Streetcar Public Art RFQ. If you have strings of holiday lights that are burned out, you can recycle them rather than tossing them in the trash. Take old or burned out lights to any of the city's three recycling centers through February 15th. The centers are located at 400 Northwest Berry Road, 4707 Doremus Avenue, and 9051 Hillcrest Road. As for your Christmas trees, recycle those at the city's leaf and brush drop-off centers through January 11th. Those drop-off centers are located at 1815 North Choteau Traffic Way, 10301 Raytown Road, and 11600 North Main Street. For information about these services, visit kcmo.org trash. The city reminds landlords that they must renew or establish registration of their KCMO rental properties with the city's Neighborhoods and Housing Services Department for 2014 by January 31st. Annual registration of rental properties is required by city ordinance and failure to do so will result in a fine. To register, please click on kcmo.org NHS and click Rental Property Registration or you may call 816-513-9010. Now let's check in with some of our city's departments. Hi, I'm Janet O'Hagan with Kansas City Convention and Entertainment Facilities. Here are some events taking place at city facilities that are guaranteed to brighten the winter gloom. Make plans now for the annual New Year's Eve celebration in the beautiful Grand Ballroom at the Kansas City Convention Center. Enjoy a fabulous dinner, party favors, photo booth, casino tables, character artist, and a balloon drop at midnight. The high energy Michael Beers band will get the whole party dancing. Single tickets are on sale at the Municipal Auditorium box office, and party packages are available at the Kansas City Downtown Marriott. For reservations, call 816-421-3000. The 2014 Mid-America RV Show rolls into Barta Hall from January 16th through 19th. This is the nation's largest consumer show dedicated to all things RV, including accessories, resorts, and travel destinations. RV enthusiasts can check out the newest products and services on the market and view more than 200 units. Tickets are $10, with ages 12 and under admitted free. For show hours and more information, go to the show website. Don't miss Sister Act at the Music Hall on January 21st through 26th, featuring original music by eight-time Oscar winner Alan Menken. Sister Act tells the story of Dolores Van Cartier, a wannabe diva whose life takes a surprising turn when she witnesses a crime. The cops hide her in the last place where anyone would think to look, a convent. Tickets are on sale at Ticketmaster.com and at the Municipal Auditorium box office. Take the first step toward a year of exciting outdoor adventures and attend the 60th Annual Kansas City Boat and Sports Show on January 23rd to 26th at Bartle Hall. Tickets are $10 with ages 15 and under admitted free. For show hours and more information, visit KansasCitySportsShow.com. To learn more about events taking place at Kansas City's Convention and Entertainment Facilities, visit KCConvention.com 
and click on the events calendar or call 816-513-5000. In addition to solving the crime, KCPD has always taken an active role in linking the families of homicide victims to services available to help them through an extremely difficult time. At the direction of Chief Forte, this victim-centered approach has now been expanded to reach families that are impacted by any violent crime with the creation of the Victims Assistant Unit. Director Doug Wisher explains. The staff is, consists of uh, sworn officers at this point, and uh, there's four of them. And what they do is they, they are assigned currently aggravated assaults to contact victims by phone predominantly. And they basically provide uh, assistance in, in three ways. If there's crisis intervention that's required, they'll help with that. They're trained to do that. Uh, other than that, they're going to give the victim rights information and, and compensation information that is required by state statute of our police department to provide victims. If a victim of an aggravated assault, for example, has been shot, the detective in the case will, will try to find the, the suspect and work the case, try to get it to court for trial. But in the meantime, the victim has medical bills from the, the wound may have need for trauma counseling, all those kind of things that, that, that are a result of the crime that occurred may, occur, may, may uh, resound into a, uh, a cascade of services that they need. And, and what we do is we try to hook them up with services that our community already provides, who can provide everything from basic needs, shelter, food, clothing, child care, transportation, and then we have a lot of partners that have, are helping us with, with mental health counseling, for trauma counseling, grief counseling, spiritual counseling, that kind of thing. Uh, we've, had, we've had a victim advocate in Jennifer Miller who's done this for many, many years. So she's, she's been doing it over 20 years. And her focus has been predominantly with homicide victims' families, survivors of homicides. And it's been very effective. And we've, we've understood, and I think Chief understood, how effective that is. But we really need to expand beyond just homicide victims' families. And having a staff to, to, to be able to do what Jennifer does with additional victims like aggravated assault, robberies, uh, sex crimes, and, and all the violent crimes that are out there uh, will really help us be able to touch a lot more people. These victim assistance specialists, they are, although they are police officers and detectives, um, they are really trained to become uh, in a very real sense, uh, an entirely different element that, than we've had in our police department. If you look at Jennifer Miller and see what she does, they're, they're going to mirror what she does. Community relations is a, is a huge piece of this. Uh, the whole point of the chief uh, with one of his strategic plan objectives was to expand community policing to the entire department. So by doing this in the Investigations Bureau, it's, uh, it's a piece that hasn't been there expanded to the extent that we we now can do it and we know it works it worked with jennifer miller we'll continue to work with her so we're giving her some additional help the addition of the victims assistant unit is one more step in kcpd's commitment to positively impact the quality of life for the community we serve i'm officer shelly gaddis have a safe week Hi, I'm Heidi Downer with the Kansas City, Missouri Parks and Recreation Department, here to tell you about some exciting news and events happening at your local city parks and facilities. Make 2014 your best year ever with a new healthy habit, joining one of our 10 Kansas City Community Centers. Now through January 31st, Parks and Rec is offering residents an annual All Access Pass, valid at all of the city's community centers for only $200. Passes include access to facilities, fitness centers, pools, and select classes. Residents may also opt to purchase a monthly pass for $25, valid at the center of their choice. Purchase a pass at any of the city's community centers. Learn more by visiting kcparks.org and clicking Centers. The Brush Creek Community Center is hosting a Martin Luther King Jr. Youth Basketball Tournament January 17th through the 19th for youth ages 8 to 15. 
We're looking for the best basketball teams in the Midwest to play in this competitive tournament. Teams must register by January 10th. Tournament divisions include 10 and under, 12 and under, and 15 and under. Team uniforms must be alike in color with a number on the front or back. For more information, call 816-513-0730. Phase 2 of Swope Park Soccer Village's $13.44 million expansion has begun. This project will build five new synthetic soccer fields this year at 63rd Street and Lewis Road in Swope Park. When completed, the Swope Park Soccer Village will be home to nine full-size soccer fields and facilities including new restrooms, concession stands and storage amenities. Swope Soccer Village will host NCAA Men's and Women's Soccer Championship tournaments through 2017. To learn more about these or other events Kansas City, Missouri Parks and Recreation has to offer, visit kcparks.org or give us a call at 816-513-7500. In observance of the New Year's holidays, city offices and the 311 call center will be closed on Wednesday, January 1st. Curbside trash and recycling collection will also be delayed one day for residents with Wednesday, Thursday or Friday pickups. Residents who usually have Monday or Tuesday collection will not be affected. Nonprofit organizations that host cultural, social, historic, educational or recreational activities may apply for a grant from the city's Neighborhood Tourist Development Fund. This fund is now accepting grant applications for activities that take place in March or April of 2014. Applications must be received by January 15th. For details, see kcmo.org slash ntdf or call 816-513-4505. For more information about this or any of today's stories, please log on to kcmo.org, scroll down to the bottom right-hand corner, and click on the weekly report. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. I'm Chris Hernandez. Have a great week.